I'm planning to use dovetails in my next project, so I want it to get better, faster, and more consistent at cutting dovetails, so I've made this simple jig that connects to my crosscut sled. This jig design is based on two videos I've watched, one by Stumpy Nubs, the other from the Woodworker's Journal, and I'll have links to both of those videos in the description below. This jig is a little bit different in that it attaches to my already existing crosscut sled, and I use a combination of the table saw and the band saw to cut the dovetails, but I'm getting great results and they don't really take too much time. To make this jig, I'll start out with a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood that's 12 inches wide and cross cut it at 36 inches. Next, I'll measure down and make a mark at 3 inches on both sides. I'll connect the marks with a straight edge, use a sharp pencil, and trace a line. I want the dovetails to have a 7 degree angle, so I'll set the miter saw at 7 degrees. I've got a piece of half inch MDF here that measures 10 inches wide, and I'll measure in a half of an inch on the back side and cut the MDF on a 7 degree angle, and that offcut will become the pattern for the jig. Now I'll hold this pattern at the line that I traced three inches from one side and trace it. Then I'll flip it over and hold it on the line and trace it on this side as well. Now I can hold a straight edge at the pattern line and extend it all the way to the edge. Now you can use your track saw to make this cut. If you don't have a track saw, like I don't have a track saw, you can use your circular saw and a straight line rip jig like the one I have right here. Next, I'll rip this piece off on the table saw, and I've set the fence to just leave the line because the offcut is the piece that I'll need. Now I'll set the fence at four inches and make the rips for the fence at the front of the jig. Next, I'll cut the same seven degree angle on the fence. Using a little painter's tape will prevent blowout at the back of the cut. With the fence of the jig held in position, I'll make a mark at the two sides and cut them at the same 7 degree angle. Again, I'll use the painter's tape to prevent blowout at the back of the cut. The painter's tape is kind of translucent, so I'll darken the mark before making the cut. Using a little wood glue, I'll attach the fence to the front of the jig with inch and a half nails. Next, I'll need some bracing for the back of the fence. After rough cutting the bracing to length, I'll rip it at three and a quarter inches on the table saw. I'll mark for the next cut, then cut it to size and attach the bracing at the center of the jig. When I attach the ends to the jig, I'll use the 23 gauge pin nailer to avoid blowout. Okay, well now most of the jig is finished. The last step is to add a back and that'll make it easy to attach the jig to the sled with squeeze clamps. I'll attach the back of the jig with a little wood glue and inch and a half nails. 
and again use the 23 gauge nails at the ends. When I was building the jig, I measured down six and a half inches from the point on both sides, made a mark and made sure not to put any nails there because that's where the saw curve will be. Now I can clamp the jig to the fence and start cutting dovetails. The first step is to set the height of the blade to the same thickness as your material. I've raised the blade to the same thickness as the board, marked out where the pins will be, and made an X where the waste material needs to be removed. With the jig in position, I'll make the first cut on the line and then go back and remove half of the material. To cut this joint, you'll need a blade with flat ground teeth. I'll put a link in the description to a good blade for cutting dovetails like this that will also work great for lap joints and finger joints. Next I'll reposition the jig, make the first cut on the line, and then plow out the rest of the material. Now that I have the pins cut, I'll use a sharp pencil and trace the tails. Now I can take this jig off and replace it with a piece of plywood. This is half inch, but you could also use three quarters. And this will support the back cut to prevent blowout. I'm going to finish cutting the tails over at the bandsaw, and I'll trace a line so I don't cut too deep. When I make the cut, I'm trying to just leave the line. Now I can set up a fence and finish the cut. Okay, well, definitely getting good results now. It did take a little bit of practice. It's like anything, you're kind of going to school. When you decide to learn a new type of joinery or anything new, you really have to be prepared to put the time in, and that's what I did. So this is the last one that I cut. These are my best results. I've got another practice piece here, and not bad. Really using the table saw, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Now you can also cut the tails with a sloped jig like this. And as you can see, I tried it, but I wasn't getting great results. So I decided not to use this jig. The main problem with that, or, or using this jig, is you can't get really tight in. So you're going to have to clean that up with a chisel. And I found it easier to just plow the material out when you're cutting the tails, and then go over to the bandsaw, cut along the line, set up a stop block or a fence, and then clean out the rest of the material. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Now when you start cutting dovetails, it's a good idea to line up a few projects where you can cut dovetails. Because just like anything, if you don't put it to work, you're probably going to forget it. And so with that being said, my next project will have through dovetails. So I'm looking forward to that. That'll be next time. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.